Beverly Welch here at the Arbor Gate in Tomball, Texas, and joined by our good friend Angela Chandler of the Garden Academy. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning, Angela. So citrus, again, we're talking about it. It's such an easy, easy, simple fruit for us to grow. It is. Especially if you have minimal space. But I guess probably the largest problem that we see with citrus on the Gulf Coast is what's called the leaf miner. Yes, citrus leaf miner. It typically makes the foliage very unattractive. So oftentimes is a little bit more of a cosmetic thing than harmful. Generally. However, whenever you have an open wound, you are inviting there's some an sort opportunity. Of yes, it's an opportunity. Yeah, it's an opportunity for, for some other pathogen to enter at that point. Right. So um, it is caused, actually, it's a moth. Yes, she lays her eggs, and she prefers to lay her eggs in the very tender new growth. We often say when they're about the size of a mouse ear, as you see with this foliage right here. Uh -huh. um, so she'll lay her eggs, and then when that larva hatches, it's so tiny that it actually gets inside the top and bottom of the leaf and it is actually eating the tissue inside the leaf. Right, so one of the mysteries, if you will, or challenges, is to know when to start our controls. One thing you can do is get a leaf miner trap. Now this tells us, purely tells us, when, when. the moth is active. Right. It will not trap the moth and prevent the damage to your tree, but it lets you know, gives you kind of a heads up. It does. That you need to start preparing. It does. So you can hang them near the orchard and just observe it on a regular basis. When you start seeing, it has a pheromone that attracts the, right. the moth. When you start seeing a population there, then you know, okay, it's time for me to start being watchful with my trees. So one indicator would be fall and spring when the tree is emerging with the new growth, yes. with, which attracts yes, them. Yes, those tiny So leaves, we know when we see this tiny new growth coming out, we need to get a right. little more vigilant mm -hmm. on our control. So what are the best methods to do? Yeah, we, we like to stay organic because we are talking about edible Absolutely. fruits. And so the most uh, effective rotation is to use a product called Spinosad, okay. which is a, uh, an actually a fermented microbe. Right. And then neem oil, which is uh, oil pressed from the neem tree. Mm -hmm. um, both of these can be used, and they, they're more effective when they're used in rotation. Right. So we'll say we'll spray uh, Spinosad, and then uh, 10, day, 10 to 14 days afterwards, spray neem. And we can alternate these two, Between the two to try to maintain control. Right. The only thing we want to watch for is that we wouldn't use spinosad when we have open blooms. Right. So we'll wait until the blooms fall. And the reason for that is that even though it is an organic approved control, it is toxic to our bees and we want to make sure that we're sure. not affecting them. Absolutely. And then with neem, we can use it much of the year here and it's right. really good for a lot of control around the, the organic landscape. But we don't want to use it when it's over about 85 degrees because it is an oil and we can have some problems with some burning on the leaves. So after this one is temperature sensitive. Temperature sensitive and then just watch for our bees. Perfect. Now, if we even want to stay more organic than that, or even supplement right. this type of method if the tree is in bloom, we can go to our foliar feeds. We can, and actually how these foliar feeds work for us is that they will actually help the plant build immunity. It will thicken the leaves somewhat, and right. the healthier and thicker they are, the less attractive they are to the insects. So regular use of foliar feeds, foliar plus, good seaweed extract, um, every, at least once a month, preferably every two weeks if right. you can fit it into your schedule. If you'll spray that on a regular basis, you'll find that in general your plants are less attractive to all pests. Exactly, because the harmful insects work on sense of smell. They do, and, and these two things just make them less attractive in general. They're going to go for the weaker plants. Sure. Insects are opportunistic. Absolutely. Now, if I were to look at this tree, I do notice a little bit of leaf miner activity starting to show. There is so some what would small I be work, work looking for? Well, the main thing is when you see a leaf that is curled like this one, uh -huh. chances are that they're, you're going to open it and find that there's a leaf miner. And sure enough, when we open this one, we can see that little oh. web. And yeah. what happens is that after the, the leaf miner, the larva, when it's through its and ready to pupate, it'll climb off to the edge and sort of uh, pupate in a little curled section of the okay. leaf. And so the other thing that we can see is like on this leaf right here. You can see the trail. We actually, actually. see a little bit of a trail uh -huh. where the insect has, uh, has started 
started to feed on the plant. And so likely uh, this was that last flush of growth. Right. And so likely the, the moth laid her egg in it when it was tiny and now we're seeing the, the larval damage. Uh, and like I say, it's generally cosmetic. Sometimes if you just see one or two leaves that are affected, right. I might not actually take any action. But we want to stay ahead of it if we start seeing it, you know, more and more of the activity around okay. the tree. Okay, perfect. This is a little simplistic, but could I not just pinch that leaf off? Of course you could. Yeah. It would be absolutely appropriate to pinch a couple of those leaves off. And if you see very little damage in your landscape, that would be the first approach okay. to take. Okay, perfect. Well, great. So we don't need to panic when we see these no. kind of curled leaves, a little distorted. Sometimes a silvery cast to them with the we little trail. We call them snack tracks because that's go. what they look like. Great. So easy to control and nothing to panic Very easy about. to control. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Beverly.